Let us pray. Thank you, Father. Father, we invite you into this meeting. We're here to search your word in the hope of finding you. Lord, we need your assistance. We need your guidance. We need your counsel. We need your wisdom. We need your understanding. You say, if any man lacks wisdom, we should ask you. We're asking you tonight. And you give us the wisdom that is easy to be entreated. That your name may be glorified in this fellowship. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Good evening to those of us who are here now. I want to start with Amara because I always, I always forget when she's not using her system that she's actually with us. So Amara, are you ready? Yes. Wait a minute, you speak up. Huh? I have two questions to start off. And the two questions come from this scripture, which I'm going to read. And I want you to pay very good attention to. Not only you, but all of us. Mark 10, 17. Now, as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus looking at him, loved him and said to him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come, take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his word, but Jesus answered again and said to them, children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, with men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Then Peter began to say to him, see, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. There is so much to discuss from this scripture. It is rich in the wisdom of God. So Amara, let us, let us begin with this question. If no one is good except God, 
what good thing can we do to inherit the kingdom of God? If you are obedient to what God says. You have to speak up. You have to speak up. If God is the only one who is good, then if we are obedient to whatever he tells us to do, then we are able to do the good that he is doing through us by obeying his commands. So, so we become good. No. And, then, and then the scripture becomes defeated. Because Jesus yeah. says, no one is good except God. So you say, if we are obedient to God, then we are good. Then the scripture is broken. And some people are good along with God. I'm not sure if we become good or that God is able to use us to do the good. Like you've said before about the distinction between ourselves and God is, is removed if we allowed ourselves to become members of him. And we're saying the righteousness that we have is God's. Our identity alone does not, um, doesn't count anymore. If the sin that we commit is now apart from us as well. Okay, let me ask you a second question. And I'm asking because I'm not satisfied with your first answer. If no one is good except God, is it possible for man to be good? No. We have contradicted your first answer. You know that. Uh, I was thinking that God is able to do good through us, but that doesn't necessarily make us good. So you want to review your first your first answer. So let me ask you the first question again. Maybe you change your mind. If no one is good except God, what good thing can we do to inherit the kingdom of God? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, thank you. Let me let me ask the same two questions one by one to Mr. Adeleke. Mr. Adeleke, good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? I'm very well, sir. Thank God. Okay. If no one is good except God, what good thing can we do to inherit the kingdom of God? Well, I, I, there's nothing we can do to to inherit the kingdom of God. There, we don't, there's no, we don't have any capacity to do anything good to inherit the kingdom of God. There's the nothing, we can, good there's nothing we can do. There's, there's nothing, nothing we can do. Yes, there's nothing we can do. No, we the the answer God. is no, not yes. Not yes. <laughs> okay. Now, if no one is good except God, is it possible for man to be good? It's not possible for us to be good. It is not possible for us to be good. Okay, because the, the only the only person that is good is God. Okay, now let, let you know. I mean, let me let me let me tell you why I pose those questions and why I'm dissatisfied with one or two of the answers you've given. Now, if no one is good except God, I say, what good thing can we do to inherit the kingdom of God? Clearly, there is no good thing that we can do to inherit the kingdom of God because. Only God is good, so only God can do good things. Huh? So, in that sense, I agree with you and with Amara, a latter answer that nothing, there's nothing we can do to inherit the kingdom of God. But the second proposition is this, if no one is good except God, is it possible for man to be good? The answer actually is yes. It is possible for man to be good for two reasons. Number one, because with God, nothing is impossible, okay? So it is possible for God to make man good, right? So 
Don't rule out anything with God. Number two, of course, it is possible for man to be good provided man is born of God. Okay, so if man is born of God, then he takes on the nature of God. And so he can be good. So goodness is the exclusive preserve of God and of those that are born of God. So can I can I say something? Yes. Yeah. The question you 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 ask, you are, you are asking that question from the point of man. That was why I said I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't put any point, point of man there. I said if okay. no one is good except God, is it possible for man to be good? I'm not asking at the point of man. I say, is it possible? So huh? if anybody asks you if anything is possible, hmm, mm -hmm. never say anything is impossible. Okay. As a principle, because God can make anything possible. Huh? With God nothing shall be impossible. So if you follow that principle right from the beginning, you would not have fallen into the cul-de-sac of saying it is not possible, all right? So Jesus provided the answer, even in the scripture that we read, because he said, with man, it's impossible. Well, with God, all things are possible. So God can make even the impossible possible. And so it is possible for man to be good if God wants him to be good. I mean, God, God told, told Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel says, they can live if you want them to live. If you don't want them to live, they will not live. So it all depends on God. So let's proceed. Can Abigail be part of this discussion or is she just listening? Good evening, Dr. Femme. Are you part of this discussion or you are just listening? <laughs> I think I would rather just listen. Okay. For now, because I'm, I'm learning about this. So. Oh, we're, 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 Abigail, we're all learning. <laughs> that's, that's, what, okay. that's, that, that's, that's why we're here. We're all learning. Yes, let me see you have your hand up. I wanted to ask if um, what if what you said is supported by Ephesians 5 1 as well. That says we should we should make we should be imitators of, of God. So if if we if we're required to imitate him, then we, we can imitate his goodness. Well, let's let's understand one thing, okay? Uh, you cannot imitate something and be that thing. All right? So let's understand that as a principle, okay? Be imitators of God. If you imitate something, you can't be that thing. Now, it's also the, the concept of originality. Mm -hmm. If something is original, a copy of it can never be the same as the original. You're going to really, in the end, have to go to the original. Now, Part of the problematic of Paul is that Paul sometimes makes the mistake and he tells people to be imitators of Paul. All right? You know, which is, you know, to me, uh, it's just not acceptable, okay? Because we want to be like God. So our own destination is not any halfway house. Now, of course, uh, we have received this fullness now. Everything that is of God is in us now. Huh? God told me, he said, Femi, you will not be born again, again. And I understood that, that my problem at the moment is that I still have the flesh. Otherwise, I can't sin. Once I drop the flesh, that's the end of sin. He that has died has been freed from sin. I'm quoting the scripture to you. So we have already been made sons of God, but it has not yet been determined. We have not yet seen what we shall be. 
But when we see him, after we have left this mortal body, we will discover that we are already exactly like him. So, let me, see, let me get back to you now. In what ways, plural, what ways was this man mistaken in his questions from the get-go? Um, I have to, I, I, I can't remember the specifics of- Let me go back to the scripture. Okay, thank you. Now, as he was going out on the road, one came running and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not be a false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. What was his mistake from the get-go? Um, a few, I think. First of all, he asked what he should do to inherit eternal life. What is, the, he, what is, what is the mistake there? Because you can't do anything to inherit eternal life. Okay, all right. That's then, what I'm looking for. So he, he felt that eternal life is like a mountain that he could climb. Then he said, God is, then Jesus was good and Jesus himself corrected that. Then he said, then when Jesus listed all the command all the commandments to him he said he had kept all of them since his youth which to be honest i doubt hold on, hold on, hold on. Then, let, let, let's look at your second proposition you said the man said jesus is good and jesus corrected him why did he correct him he corrected him that he is not good no he corrected him by saying that word should only be applied to one person. Yes, but he was applying it to Jesus. So how yeah. was corrected him? Well, Jesus himself corrected him. So I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm saying that Jesus corrected him, that he should, that only God is good. Why do you call me good? Mm -hmm. So oh, you are the one who says Jesus is correcting him. I'm saying that Jesus didn't correct him in okay. that sense. Okay, so let <laughs> Let's look at the, the difference. Somebody comes to Jesus and says, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Okay? Jesus says, why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. Of course, Jesus is not saying that he is not good. So what exactly is Jesus saying? Jesus is telling this man that he is God. Okay? Now, you call me good. No one is good but one. That is God. If Jesus is a good teacher, then Jesus must be God. Hmm? So, Jesus is not saying, I am not good. There is only one person that is good. Don't apply it to anybody else. So, yeah, Missy, let me continue with you for a minute. What was the spiritual state of this man who was seeking to inherit eternal life? Stage. Pardon? Did you say stage? The state, state, the spiritual state of the man. Okay. Well, well, he was self-righteous. So. He was self-righteous. Yes. Is that all that his problem was? Oh, well, he was. Do you really think he was self-righteous? Well, how do you, how can you actually say that you have kept all of those things since your birth? Every, every single one of those things, uh, only a self-righteous person would actually, and somebody who is deceiving themselves, but also, but the, but, the, but the man, 
I mean, but <laughs> this, this man is a very complex man. And he's of great interest because we may be like him. Right? Really? Yes. Uh, in, in different ways. Number one, this woman, this man seeks eternal life. Number two, he does not assume that he has already achieved it. Okay. He comes, he, did, he does not come like Nicodemus at night. He comes in the day. He gets to Jesus. He kneels down. And he says, good teacher. What must I do? So he already presumes that there is something lacking in his faith. So, yes, you can say he's self-righteous, but there is a limitation to his self-righteousness. I don't know. I don't think so. Well, because he doesn't, he doesn't think that he has achieved it. I think that there is a, a certain showiness to his, to, to, you know. But so why would he come to Jesus at all? Um, perhaps he was looking, perhaps he was hoping that something would be confirmed rather than something that he would say something was lacking. Because I think that if you, you, if even in that statement where he's saying, I have done all these things, he's, he comes during the day, he does kneel down, he calls it good teacher. And he presumes that, okay, I, I have the um, first, I have the, the presence of mind to see that this guy is a good teacher in quotes. But I have also acquired a certain, um, you know, degree of I'm already on my way because I have done this and this and that. He's not like the guy who goes into the temple and says, God have mercy on me. No, he's actually, you know, ranked himself. And he can tell you that he is very good at certain things. So he is self-righteous. Who, who, is, who, is, who is more self-righteous according to you? The man in the temple or this man? The man that kneels and, and is asking for mercy. Or this man? The man in the temple, the man that says, you know, I fast. No, 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 not that one. I'm not talking. I'm talking about the one who comes in and kneels. and no, says. I'm, I'm asking you about the one that says I fast twice a week. If you fast, if you if you come and say if two two men and come to, come into this room, one of them says I fast twice a week, I keep all the laws of or whatever, I keep all the laws of the Torah, and then somebody comes and is very specific and says every day of my life till I'm an adult, I have honored my parents, I have. Mm -mm. I think the the one that is most self righteous is the more analytical one, the one that has given you the details of his righteousness. Because in that room, you'll be able to point to the one that says, I've kept all the land, say, no, of course not. But the person who is saying, I have done all of these things, of course, you know that he hasn't. So there's, a, there's an added delusion uh, in, to his uh, self-righteousness. Okay, so, you know, um, how do you explain verse 21? Then Jesus looking at him, loved him. Why did Mark tell us Jesus loved this man? Because Jesus loved everyone. Uh, and I, I mean, that's, never, not, that's not true. But now what you're trying to indicate is that somehow there was something about him that made Jesus love him. Yes. There, mean, there's, something, there's something about him that made Mark to tell us that Jesus looking at him loved him. Why did he have why did he feel the need to tell us that? Perhaps it is for those of us who are self-righteous. Let's just finish it this way. Let's, 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 just, let's just finish it here. Yeah. I don't agree with you at all. Um, this man is different from the man in the temple. Okay. This one is actually 
a very honest man, all right? He might be ignorant, but he's honest, okay? Now, he, 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 he comes running. He's a ruler of the Jews, so he's a man of substance. He comes running. He gets to Jesus. He kneels before him. He calls him good teacher, and he's not asking for ways to increase the level of his business, ways to have a longer life. No, he asks, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So right from the beginning, okay, this man's problem is one of ignorance, but he is honest. He is somebody that seeks eternal life. Okay? Now, and then Jesus tells him, okay, you know the commandments, don't commit adultery. He said, well, you know, I have not committed adultery. Don't murder. I said, I have not, I have not killed anybody. Don't steal. I have not stolen anything. Don't be a false witness. I have not I didn't be a false witness with anybody. Don't defraud. He said, I have never defrauded anybody. Honor your father and your mother. He said, I honor my father and my mother. He says, I've kept these things from my youth. But even though he kept these things from his youth, he still came to Jesus running and kneeling before him and saying, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus knows that huh, this man is simply ignorant. That, but he is at least a seeker until we saw that in the end, um, he could not fulfill the requirements and uh, the requirements that Jesus gave him. And that in itself is not surprising, okay? The only mistake that the man made was that he walked away, all right? You know, I mean, um, <laughs> Jesus knew that he could not fulfill the requirement that he gave him, okay? Because he gave him a requirement that is not explicitly stated in the law, but that it is implied in the law. So let me ask uh, uh, Samukwa. Why did Jesus tell this man to go and sell all that he has and give the proceeds to the poor? Good evening, church. Good evening, doctor. Good evening. Um, I want to believe that um, Jesus was perhaps trying to let the man understand uh, his own heart and his attachment to his properties. Continue. Showing, the, showing the things that were of value to him, you know, because if as we, as you have observed, uh, he was a seeker and Jesus knew he was a seeker. And from the, from how Mark decided to describe it, he saw these things and loved him and then spoke to him. Uh, the, the, like you said, the only mistake he made was to walk away. The truth is that Jesus' instruction to him to do this thing revealed to him the, the, um, the, the, the values that he had in life in terms of the things being attached to his possessions and not, know, not understanding how he would be able to, you know, how he would be able to cope without 
those things that he was using. In short, he was he was being told to change his lifestyle completely, and uh, he it it wasn't something he could comprehend. So I I think that perhaps Jesus told him that to give him an insight into his own thoughts of uh, his value about his values. I I, I think. That's what I that's what I can think of. Hello. 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 I think we have to wait a while. Maybe doctor is doing something. Yeah. Uh, okay. Russell, so, there's something I wanted you to to look at. You know, okay. Based on the based on the question doctor asks. So okay. what came to my mind was that uh, for Jesus to ask that question, I was looking at it from a point that maybe Jesus look at the man and see that it is true that this man is asking for for spiritual things, asking for for what 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 must he do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus has look at the man before you able to start asking for spiritual things, you must first of all lay down your life, which is the natural one. The natural, man, the natural one must not be so important to you, which is the wealth and everything. If the kingdom of God is so important, more important than the, the than your wealth, you know, it would have been easier for you to lay down your wealth. But Jesus knew. That's why Jesus asked, okay, okay, if you want the spiritual things, lay down the natural, the, the, all the other uh, wealth and whatever that, that are not even important. You know, that's just what I, I, I don't know what you, what, what do you think? Yeah, 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 I, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Very right. Uh, uh, what I was thinking, the, the, like the part that, the, the part that I found unfortunate is the part where uh, it says that he went away very sad, you know, mm -hmm. because if we look at certain other scenarios, you know, Jesus does things like this. Let's look at the um, 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 look at the, uh, the, the the scenario where um, he, he went to Bethsaida and he healed one person out of all the people who were there, and he went away. He did not. Well, he, we are not told whether anybody else, you know, rushed him to say, "Oh God, what of us?" But. Mm. He healed one person and he went away. That tells us that Jesus expected certain response from the others. Mm -hmm. they, they, he has, I mean, if you've seen somebody do this and he did, the, the person didn't need to jump inside water. So what are you waiting for? So I think Jesus, there is always a part that God expects us to play in the, in the fulfillment of some of the things that we desire. You can't just leave everything because it's not magic. So in Jesus going to heal one man and walking away, it would be expected that others with common sense would gather him. Don't leave, look like blind, but was shouting, don't pass me by, I beg, I beg. So, yeah. and nobody did that and they allowed him to go. This same situation here, this man comes and he hears this uh, 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 instruction from Jesus Christ and he, he just goes away. One would have expected that he should have, you know, spoke, come to, spoken to Jesus, just loud, open up and say, ah, mm. I mean, I, I'm not really sure I know how to do that. Too. It's a very tall order. Can you teach me or help me? Because uh, look at um, uh, the other person that Jesus Christ also encountered, where um, I can't remember the, the, the the exact situation, but I remember that the the man said to Jesus, "Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief." Do you mm. do you remember that scenario? Yeah. Now, yes. Yes. Yeah. 
that scenario was that person admitting that, yes, even though I believe, but Emila said that my belief may have some comma, just help, help me, Sha, and, and strengthen that unbelief for me, help me. Because he admitted that it was a challenge to him by saying, help my unbelief, asking for help. So this young ruler, I'm thinking that what he should have done would have been to also, you know, lay before- Ask for help. Yes, ask for help because of the difficulty of the requirement that Jesus set before him. So that, that's, uh, that's what I, I, I'm thinking. Yeah. And it looked, I, I see- I would have from, helped him. Yes. Yeah. And I, I see from this- He would have just said that, look, Lord, I, I, I can't do it, I'm, I'm, you know, unless you help me, you know. Uh -huh. That exactly. would have been the issue, yeah. But it looks like Jesus likes putting people in that kind of situation. <laughs> well, 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 there's something I, I, I also want you to look at. The, 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 if we look at the man itself, I feel that it's it is, it, it is actually a horse that he's talking about. When I look at it critically, I see that ah, a lot of the time when we are when we are praying for for spiritual things, we are praying for his kingdom. We are still holding on to this this life, holding on to and those things that are holding holding on to, they are like a stumbling block. And what God wants us to do is to lay down those ones, so we, that that we will be able to focus. So when Jesus gave that man that condition. Jesus has already seen that the man is holding on to, even though he has, he's asking that, ah, I want to inherit your kingdom. What must I do? But Jesus know that, uh, have you sought out this, this, your wealth and every other thing? You know, and what we need is to just ask for help. That's the, the, other, yes. the other part I just yes. said. Yes. You, you need to first understand that you are, you are, you are, you are constrained, you have some difficulties and, uh, and then ask for help. You can't, you can't come from a tough, tough guy, you know, that you have everything under control. You can't do that, not with Jesus. You know, I mean, this, 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 this should continue to apply to us because it's not just, <laughs> it's, just it's not just put in the scriptures for historical reasons. Okay, so let me let me ask my sister, Miss uh, Yandang. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, doctor. <laughs> it took so long to, and then you just came and shouted, good evening, you know. Yes, no, I had to leave where I was. It was kind of noisy. Uh, comfort, in what way would selling all his only possessions give this man treasure in heaven? Um, for me, I think selling all his possession at that time would have ha given him a new heart, you know. And that's I think why How God that they give him a new heart. It would have changed his ways. Okay, why for me? Why God? Um, Jesus asked him to sell all of all of his possession, or well, because he saw that it was like a difficult task for him to do. Maybe he, the value he put to his possession was really taking the place of God, you know, in his life. He valued them so much. So if he had done that, successfully done that, then it would have given him a different mindset. It would have changed his position to, you know, know God and all of that. God would have filled that vacant space, would have taken over. And for me, he would have gotten a space in heaven like that. <laughs> Even if he, even if he um, grudgingly sold all his possessions, it would have given him a treasure in heaven. Because he obeyed? I'm asking. Oh, okay, I thought you were telling me. No, I'm asking you. I'm asking, I'm asking. No, no. 
how the selling of his earthly possessions would give the man treasure in heaven. So for me, I think that's what, because I think when he would have accepted first to say, okay, I'm going to sell, then there would have been a way that God would just change the whole thing because he has accepted to sell it. <laughs> He first thing is to obey. <laughs> then God will work. There's something to work on, right? Intervene. Okay, okay, I understand your thinking. So uh, why why could the man not obey? Because he's attached to it. And that was why specifically God even told him to do that because he felt this one can part with this possession. He valued them or valued that possession so much, his wealth. It's like his life. And basically, God was asking him for his life. He wanted him. But he knew that. Uh -uh. So what is Jesus trying to tell us? By his Sorry, I didn't get that. What is Jesus trying to tell us by his injunction to this man? Um, He's trying to tell us that we Jesus should depend on us that we should sell all that we have. No, 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 our minds he's not asking us to should sell. not be attached he's to whatever us, possession. He's not asking us to sell all we have. The first thing he's teaching us here is no, the no, condition no, no. of your heart. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to ask you a question. You run away from the question and decide to answer something else. Is he asking us to sell all we have? No. What is he asking us to do with all we have? Freely, uh, freely we have received. Freely we should <laughs> give. <laughs> Stop laughing. Uh, what is he asking us to do? You say that, you know, I mean, he told this man to sell all he has. You say, well, he's not asking us to sell all we have, even though he told the man to sell all he has. Okay, fine. What is he asking us to do with all that we have? Or I can ask you the question in a different manner. Yes, please. I think that would help. How can we have treasure in heaven? By having God, I like God have his way in our life. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be sold out to him. We shouldn't be dependent on yeah, things, yeah, deadly yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just running away from the from the answer. Okay, thank you. Yeah, running away from the answer. And I, I want to I want to get you to, you know, <laughs> look. <laughs> so that's anyway by selling our possessions. You are, you are running away from the answer. I mean, you, the Swami says, you know, you are the cousin of this man, the way you are running away now. Because you say he didn't tell us. Okay, Sam. Okay, let, let, let me move back a couple of steps to the point where you said um, uh, um, what message is Jesus passing across to us Yes. by what he told this man. First of all, I believe Jesus is making us understand that we had better not allow material possessions be a, an obstacle, a stumbling block to our uh, gaining possession of the kingdom of how, God. How, how, how can we make sure it's not an obstacle? Okay, then that moves to yeah, the second... I've yeah, decided to express what he says in a very strange way. We should not. Uh, no, no, no. That takes me. No, make that it takes more, me to make it more frontally. Okay, that, so what that means. What does he want us to do with our possessions? Uh -huh. That's that takes me to that particular question now, which okay. is that, which is that he wants us to utilize our possessions for the benefit of others, because in that way, by ministering to others, we are ministering unto God. That's what I feel he's telling us to do. So basically, he does not want us to get rid of our possessions. It yes. is basically. Well, uh, don't, 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 don't answer me in a long winded way. No, I, 
Does he want no. to get rid of our possessions? Not get rid of our possessions. Yes or no? It is. Yes or no? Does he want us to get rid of our possessions? Yes, by giving, by, by using it for others. <laughs> That's what I believe. He wants us to get rid of our possessions. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> um, uh, let, let me ask, let me include some other people in the discussion and see whether we can throw more light on that. Uh, Victoria and Joshua, good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Jesus tells a ruler of the Jews to sell all he has and give to the poor, and then to come and follow him. What does this mean for us? Okay, I I I think it means I need to think properly. You want me to come back to you? Okay, maybe in a minute. Let me okay. let me analyze the question. All right. Benedict Aligbe. Good evening, sir. Good evening, church. Good evening. The same the same question. What does Jesus want us to do with our possessions? <laughs> what does he want us to give it out? Where you give us, it out. He wants us to give it out. The same thing, the, the population on earth. The same way, the same uh, this is to demand now. He wants us to give out all our possessions. Yes. For have, have you done what he asked? What do you think he's, he's asking us to do? Is a struggle. I'm trying. Are I'm you even there. struggling to do it, or you are not even? You are not doing. How much of it are you giving? <laughs> I don't think you believe that he wants us to give out all our possessions. That's why I, I believe this morning, uh, our, as I was uh, in uh, in my house, I was thinking about the same question. From, but the way it came not like, like, exactly like this, he was saying, you for you to receive um life, you have to lose. Jesus doesn't want us to give out all our possessions. That's not what this scripture means. How? Oh. Right, I, 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 you know, so um, um, and don't interpret it in a way that suggests that you really are not you are not interested in Jesus's injunction. Okay, let me understand what you mean. He, he wants us to forsake our possessions. Okay. There is a specific instruction of that. I think it's Luke 14, 33. He wants us to forsake all that we have. Because he's not asking us to give it all away. Okay. Okay. But he's asking us to relinquish ownership. Is asking us to be stewards of our possessions. Okay, because, understand now. Because he wants God to be our only possession. Okay, understand, understand now. Samukwa. Okay. Oh, sorry, I, I forgot to take down the hat. Okay, so you okay, you are thinking, you know. So I mean, uh, so um, he, he he you know I mean, he wants us, to, you know, I mean, he doesn't want us to have any treasure on earth. Nothing that we treasure on earth. God must be our only treasure. The desire of all nations. Okay. God must be the only treasure that we have. Let me go back to MC. What did Jesus mean when he said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God? Is Yemi still here? Yes, sir, I am. 
What is your understanding of that scripture? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. How should we understand this? My understanding is that the rich man already has a set of priorities that are contradictory to that of the kingdom of God. So he's- what, are, what is it that he has that is contradictory? Priorities, different priorities. So- What are his different priorities? His riches are his priorities in his, in what would be his own kingdom. But in, so, so um, for a rich man, his, the accumulation of riches is his priority. Is that the, the priority of all rich men? Most of them. So it's not all rich men? Well, uh, he didn't, he did not say some rich men. So, so if you, so you, yeah. you, still, you still have not explained the scripture. Jesus did not say it is easier for the camel to go through the eye of the needle than for some rich men to enter the kingdom of God. No. He said it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man. Well, I'm to enter asking the kingdom of God. Understanding. I'm, I'm, uh, that's what I understand that the that the rich man in quotes is invested in his riches, so he cannot also at the same time be invested in the kingdom of God. So are there rich men that are not invested in their riches? Let me let me, let me pose the question directly to you. Would Abraham inherit the kingdom of God? Well, there's already a distinction in the Bible with people who are rich towards God and people who are rich. So the, 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 my understanding is that there is a specific kind of rich man who is being referred to in, this, in, in Jesus' statement. And well, not what, is, what is this? What is this kind of rich man that Jesus is talking about here? Rich with the riches of the world. He's, he's rich with the riches that Jesus was being offered by Satan on the, you know, during his fasting. No, but, but Abraham had the riches of the world. He was the rich in cattle. The did not have Abraham. I beg your pardon? The riches of the world did not have Abraham. So there is a kind no, of rich was, Abraham was a rich man. Well, I don't know. I've, this is what I what I understand is what I've said. I don't know. I don't know the answer like, apart from that. Okay, all right. That's why you're here. Mm -hmm. Always part of the reason why you come here, let me see, is to learn some things that you don't know. Okay, um, Festus. Good evening. Good evening, sir. What did Jesus mean when he said it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God? That means that uh, the, the rich men have already have their, they have already inherited their um, heaven and earth already with the position they have. So it's as far as they consider the things they have here, that this is, is, is much valuable to them. It will be very difficult for them. And a poor man in the kingdom of God. Uh, yes. 
but also some can't enter because they are also they are also hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. How how will a poor man enter? Um, you have to totally, um, you have to totally give up. No, it's not totally giving up anything. It just has to be poor. And yeah, but there are some that they are not, they don't want to be poor. Yes, they you know, know yeah, yes. that, that's what I'm saying. That. Let us, let us look at, let us look at both equations. Logically, a rich man cannot enter the kingdom of God, according to Jesus. Okay, so he didn't say certain rich men, some rich men. He said no rich man will make it. Okay, um, he did not define the attributes of the rich man. So I ask you the same equation: a poor man. Can a poor man enter the kingdom of God? Yes. Don't now bring attributes to it. Can a poor man enter? Yes. How will he enter? Um, yeah, because um, for him being poor, um, um, for him being poor, there is nothing um, nothing beneficiary for him here on earth. So um, he is walking towards he was walking towards to inherit the kingdom of heaven. I don't even know the kingdom, but he's walking towards is, is, that, the, that, is, is that the case with all the poor men that you know? Huh? I say mm -hmm. is that the case with all the poor men that you know? No, that's what I'm saying. That there so, is some so, 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 some of the poor men that you know will not enter the kingdom of God. Yeah, they are richer because they are, they are, are poor you? physically, but they, I said they are they are poor physically, but according to what they believe and they think, they are they are very rich. How are they rich? Do they have any money? Yes, because they they are rich because they are working towards a possibility that they can be able to achieve every single thing that the rich man wants or owns or have. So they want to so they want to have all the good things of the earth. Yeah, but yeah. You know, but but if you take an example of a man called Barnabas. Who just switched on the, the who just joined us now <laughs> for some strange reason? As I mentioned his name, he joined us. Uh, Barnabas was a rich man. Will he enter the kingdom of God? As the Barnabas in the scripture. It's a rich man. Will he enter the kingdom of God? Is it going to be hard for him to enter the kingdom of God? No. Then you have you have defeated Jesus' statement. Because well, Jesus, says, Jesus' statement says that even Barnabas cannot enter. Yeah, but um, yeah, the, yes, um the statement is 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 generalized generalize the statement, but I feel that there is um some people materially they are rich, um, but if you look at them, um, every single thing um, they, they have, they are just giving it out because they want to give it Except that God. Jesus didn't make this distinction. Hmm. He forgot to make the distinction. They are adding to the scripture. In which case, Jesus should have said, it is easier for a camel to enter than for a rich man, except those ones that hmm. give out their money. He didn't say that. He made, as usual, a tautological statement. No rich man can enter. Without qualification. 
If it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, a camel can't go through the eye of a needle. So they say it is impossible for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. So first of all, what is Jesus saying? That's why I ask, what about a poor man? First uh, let me let me broaden the discussion. Uh, Benedict has his hand up. From that from that statement, um, yes. <laughs> Mr. Joe is saying nobody can enter, both the rich and the poor. Thank except you. Except you talk to him. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, thank you. Now, now, in fact, we are helped, okay, by the new international version to start with. You know, I mean, I mean so Jesus. <laughs> his position from the expression of the rich man, which people assume that I will enter, okay? So that's why his disciple asked him then, you know, if rich man can enter, who then can be saved, okay? And then he answers the equation with man. Salvation is impossible. So yes. a rich man cannot enter. A poor man cannot enter the kingdom of God. Impossible. Well, cow, cow cannot follow the eye of any duo. Yes, it's impossible. You know. So, what is the answer? The answer lies in the God that makes the impossible possible. The, possible. the same thing that he was telling the man right from the beginning. Okay, the same thing he was telling the man right from the beginning. That it's all about God. Yeah? In order to be good, you have to be born of God. The same message that he gives Nicodemus. Yeah? Except a man is born again, he cannot see or he cannot enter the kingdom of God. It is salvation is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Without the power of God, salvation is impossible, whether to the poor or to the rich. Now, I'm going to show you something just for the sake of this discussion. Hmm? It's, a, it's a fantastic distortion which is exposed by NIV Bible. Uh, let us look at the same statement in NIV. Okay? This is actually what Jesus said, which is different from what we read in Mark. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. In his explanation, he now broadened it to everybody, okay? He said, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the hour of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Now, people had a difficulty with this and they, this, they translated it. Let's look at New King James. You find that verse 24 of New King James changes it to trusting in riches, which is really not he said, what he said in the original. Hmm? Verse 23, Jesus said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus said again and said to them, children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. He did not say that, not in the original codex. He says how hard it is to enter, period. Because that is what is consistent with Verse 27, with men, salvation is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Now, let me jump, even in, uh, 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 let, us, let us expand the discussion. Let us expand the discussion uh, to some of the ambiguities in Jesus' position. Amara, are you still here? Yes, I am. Who is a rich man?
Did you hear my question? Yes, I, I do. Who is a rich man? How do you define a rich man? Someone who has a great amount of anything. Someone who has a great amount of anything. You know, it is it, <laughs> it is quite clear to me, Amara, that you are a very intelligent girl. Very, very intelligent. Uh, I hope I hope you you will not be a lawyer. <laughs> I hope you will not go into the legal into the legal profession. Okay, Amara says somebody who has a great deal of anything. All right, uh, let me ask somebody else again. Barnabas, welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Who is a rich man, Barnabas? A rich man is someone who has God. <laughs> well, clearly, that is not what Jesus is talking about here, because he says that a rich man will not enter the kingdom, the kingdom of God. So in the context of this discussion, because we are looking at this, the polemic between Jesus and uh, the young ruler that came to him seeking to inherit eternal life. He said it is easier okay. for a camel to enter the eye of a needle than for a rich man. So who is a rich man according to Jesus in this? Because you see, uh, one has to be very careful about Jesus and his words to know exactly what he's talking about in different situations and circumstances. So I ask you again, who is a rich man that ah. that God has a problem with? Well, I would uh, can I think I'm a combat? Okay, all right. All right. Who is a rich man? I am inclined to I'm inclined to agree with Amara that a rich man is someone who has an abundance of anything. Can you define the anything? Anything like what? Yeah. Anything could be, he has, could be abundance, he has an abundance of peace. Is he a rich? It man? could be. It could be. Yeah, it will depends on the defining factor because he could be rich in 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 cash. He could have an abundance of cash. He could have, uh, you know, an abundance of property. Yeah, you know, so that. You know, that is, in this context, those people are, 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 are considered rich men, people who have an abundance, and particularly, I suppose, in, materi in material possessions. Sam, um, does God want you to be rich? Materially? Well, if we are following his scripture, he wants us to be rich spiritually. But why don't you ask am... the question I ask you? You, 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 you? I ask you one question, you answer the one you want. Did I ask you no. if you want you to be rich spiritually? I said, does he want you to be rich materially? Yes, I would say so. In he wants because, to be uh, but but your earlier 
your earlier position said the rich man that is against is the one that has a lot of money and that has a lot of property. Yes, because there are there are specific uh, uh, attributes to the whole thing. Because so he doesn't want us to to have a lot of money. It is not. I believe. I, believe, I personally believe. Properties. Huh? I I personally believe that in his granting things like that, it is a question of stewardship, like you have mentioned. It is not about. It's about what you are doing with it, because he puts us. In charge of these things, not that is. I mean, he doesn't in charge of these things. But then, first of all, he gives us the things to be in charge with. Does he want you to have, you know? I mean, there's a scripture that says it is God that gives you the power to get wealth. So you first of all have it before that you decide what to do with it. Okay. So are you are you going to nullify that scripture? Yes. He doesn't want us to have wealth. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Say that again. Are you going to nullify the scripture that says it is God that gives us the power to get wealth? Oh, definitely not. Okay, so he wants us to be wealthy. Yes. So he wants us to be rich. Yes. Okay, but then your earlier submission says he doesn't want us to have money. He doesn't want us to have properties. No, no, no. I'm... Um, I am saying my position has been that is based on the description, the explanation that you gave a few minutes ago, which I am also following that line. The wealth we are talking about is, is about stewardship of that wealth and what you are using it for, you see? So that now determines our, that now determines. That explanation does not nullify you're having the wealth. No, 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 it doesn't. It does You have to have it to be able to use it. Okay, for... but why did you start off by saying he doesn't want us to have properties? He doesn't want us to have to have to have money. I mean, did I say that? How do you, how, that's that's where you started. You agreed with Amara. That's where you started, and I'm wondering where do you place Job? No, no, no. I said I said I agree with Amara in the sense that she said anyone who has an abundance. Of, of anything, yes, something so like that. Why would, yes, you know, so he doesn't want us to have things in abundance. So why did he give Job so much? But she didn't say that he doesn't want us to have things in abundance. She was just defining her opinion of a rich man, which you asked her. Yes, but we are defining a rich man contextually. And the context in which we are trying to define a rich man is the rich man that God doesn't like. Yes. And, and, so I, and is, I said... The rich man that God doesn't like? The man that has a lot of money? No, 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 no. That's not the rich man that God does not like. The rich what man is, that God... The rich man that God does not like is one whose priorities are his riches. That's where his, that is where his priorities are. That is because even the scripture tells us that, you know, where your, your uh, treasures are is where your heart is or, where, or whether it's the other way around, I'm mixing it up. But you see, God, does, God knows where he wants our hearts to be. We may have riches, but our hearts are not supposed to be, you know, focused on that. Because like we have said, we have established, we, we are stewards of the wealth. So having established okay. that. Well, you know, but you have gone, you have gone two steps. <laughs> First of all, the man has riches and then he puts his trust in them. Before he can put his trust in the riches, he has to get the riches, okay? So my question is a stage one. Does God want us to get the riches? They're the one that is adding whether put the trust or not put in trust. Yeah, want to, have the, riches to start with. Yeah, for the mere fact that he has, he has said that he's the one who gives us the power to make wealth, yes. 
and he even okay. describes. So, like you have departed from Amara. Let's, 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 let's go forward, okay? Because you have changed your position. Uh, Benedict. Sir? Yes. Um, Who is a rich man? That, a rich man is. That is, God doesn't is like. That God doesn't like. Yes. Is a man, a man that is proud. Thank you. Uh, so let, let me understand the nature of his riches. He's, he's proud so with it's, his wealth. It's, it's not necessarily, you know, the, the one that God is concerned about uh, is that his riches are in himself. Oh, yes. Okay. Right? So he, 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 he can actually be a poor man. Yes, yes. He can actually be a poor man. He might, he might be proud also. But be, but be rich. Yes. You know, okay. Now, uh, you help us, help us with this. With this he says, uh, Paul says in uh, 2 Corinthians 8 9, he says, We know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Now, can you explain that scripture to, to us? Do I need to open it so that you can see it? Uh, uh, doctor, I've been hearing that scripture, but I, I've not been able to understand it because I have said, Okay, so you can explain was, it. Now. Jesus was made poor for us to be rich. Yes. And then sometimes, what, what, what you, I, you, will I, it, you will understand it today. Don't talk too much. You don't okay, understand sir. it. Fine. If I couldn't get somebody that understands it, if we can't get it by the grace of the Almighty, I will try to explain it. Uh, I will try to I will try to explain it. Um, let me see if um, who can help us. Let me see if Festus can help us. Festus, I think I will open the scripture here. Okay. Yes, the scripture. Uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Now, there are certain things that we simply need to, to, to identify in this. Number one, how was Jesus rich? Number two, how did he become poor? Number three, how are we poor? Number four, how did we become rich through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? Can you help us with those two of, uh, four paradigms or whatever you can call them? Yeah, Jesus was rich um, because he was coming. Uh, he, was because he was coming from the father, the father owned everything, so he was rich. Um, How do you define his riches? Um, the, I, I believe that every single thing, because if um, he and the father are one, everything that the father has is his own. So the father is the owner of everything. So the son is rich. Okay. Fantastic. All right. So how did Jesus become poor? Yeah, uh, he became poor because um, now he was here. So he was here to also show us the way to the father. How did he become poor? You know, the way that is not becoming poor. We focused on the scripture, first us, don't lose sight of the scripture. He said he became poor. How did he become poor? Uh, he gave that to which he has to us. Then he become poor. What did he? What did he give to us that he that that that? <laughs> what did he give? To, what did he give to us that he really? It's not I I I I uh, I I know he uh, he he gives 
that which is um, highly esteemed, the position he has, that he comes down here, um, um, where he comes from, giving that out, then it becomes it becomes poor. Uh, you, you are saying it, but you are not saying it. So let me let me let me see if I can get somebody that will give me a more fulsome expression than you. I was going to call Barabbas, and he has his hands up. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So um, I'll just continue from where first to stop. No, no, no. no. Just... no. Don't continue where first to stop. Just say your own. Say your own. Okay. How was Jesus okay. rich? Jesus was rich because he had the Father and he was righteous. And he became poor when he bore our sins. When he became, um, when, when he had to bear our sins and he took the sins of mankind, that made him poor. And through that act of um, becoming poor, we who were poor have the opportunity to become rich in God. So that, that's, a, that's a very interesting definition you have given us. So the, the real rich man uh, riches cannot be divorced from God. True. Okay. So yes. I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to walk through this to see whether you agree with me or not. So there are, there are quite a few people that we call rich men here that are poor men. I'm talking now. I'm asking you a question. <laughs> but Sorry. I lost you. I said, does it mean there are quite a few people that we call rich here that are actually poor men? You are not saying anything. Is Barnabas still with us? Or have we lost him? Are you still with us? Yes, I'm here, I'm here. But I... What's going on? There are quite a few people here who... What's going on? Is there something wrong with your phone? Okay, Panabas, let, 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 me, let me try someone else. Uh, Dotu, maybe you can help us. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, so Jesus was talking to some churches in the book of Revelations. And he said, they're actually very poor, although they thought they think they're rich. So I, I said, Trying to summarize some of the issues that Barnabas raised, that there are quite a number of people that we deem to be rich, who in actual fact are very poor. Yes, they, 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 they have, especially people that are people that are not in control of their riches, because God can have them to take certain huge amount and give to Mr. He or Mr. B, they just obey. And they rely on God for every step on the way. Even though the, the, the riches is there, they are not in control. No, you have, you have actually, oh. you, have, you have lost Barnabas. Okay. You have lost Barnabas. Now, Barnabas defines a rich man as a man who has God not the man who has money, not the man who has property. But unfortunately for us, we define rich men as people who have money, who have properties, and not as men who have God. Hey, well, it, so the mistake that we make 
No, my explanation is this, doctor. The explanation, yeah. if you will keep quiet and let me finish. Okay. Hmm? Okay. The explanation is different. It actually takes it to a different route. The mistake that we make is that we define physical wealth as riches. Whereas the true wealth is God. Okay. Um, you see mentioned earlier on, or some people who are rich towards God, or they are rich in God, or they are heirs of God. So they possess all things. So you can get a sheikh from Saudi Arabia and he can be a multi-billionaire, but he is actually a very poor man because he does not have God. And no man can have God except through Christ. So sometimes we define wealth, huh? Malachi says sometimes we call we call the wicked to be righteous. A lot of the time we call very poor men and we call them, we say they are rich. So let us for a few minutes understand the deceitfulness of riches. Okay, so Dr. in what way can money stop us from doing or being what God wants us to do or to be? Any time that we, if any time we take money to be important, it will, there's no way it will not be a stumbling block. How? Money is not relevant when it comes to how will it be a stumbling block? God. How will it be a stumbling block? Because the moment we have, we take more, if money determines a lot of things in our, in our, in our decision taking, we want to do X, Y, Z, we have to now look at our, our bank, our this to do something. My question is, we have how, lost it. how, 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 how? Always try to answer the question. How? Give me the how of it. Well, I, I, I'll come back, sir. Let me just think about it. Barnabas, is your system now working? Yes, sorry. Um, I'm actually on the road, so I don't know. The network is kind of fluctuating. OK. Yes. In what way can money militate against our doing what God wants us to do? Mm. Okay, so what comes to mind is when we put um, the importance on the money instead of what God wants us to do. So I I want to extend a, a helping hand. You have changed the paradigm. But then I'm trying to do it so that people will see that yes, I am rich enough to do that. Not because um, I feel I need to do a service for God and for man. So that way. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen to my question again. How does money prevent us from doing what God wants us to do? Just think of the question for a minute before you answer it, so that you can answer the question. How does money militate against our doing what God wants us to do? Wow. 
dass man maybe you should help with some clean. <laughs> you should help with what? With some clue. Some, some idea. Okay, Let, let's hope maybe Benedict will give us the clue. You're assuming because I'm asking the question, I have the clue. Where are Benedict? Uh, <laughs> I, I, when, um, what comes to mind is that um, when um, someone is too rich, um, in the world, literally, you you might my my have difficulty in trusting God for spiritual things. Um, one one of the cases that if you are sick, you don't go to God for healing. The first thing that you want to do is to try the positive way of um your physical your financial moves you and see and see where you can get the results until when. You cannot get the results from your financial um, um, strengths. That is when you remember God. That is one of the way. You God will not come to your mind at all at all because you are too rich in anything that you want to do. You want to. You are looking for want to buy anything. You want to work or you want to build a house. You want to for any part of the world. God does not come to your mind because you believe that your financial strengths. Get you whatever you want. That's one I what one of the I think our money um uh, prevents so many people from coming to God. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh yeah, Missy. Uh she she's she's not here. Okay, Amara, what are the advantages and disadvantages of being wealthy? The disadvantages of being wealthy. The advantages and the disadvantages. Uh, the advantage of being wealthy on earth is that um, I guess you gain respect from um, people, not necessarily from God. You. Okay, you, you, people, people start to esteem you. Yeah. All right. Which is abhorrent to God. Okay. They esteem you instead of God. They bow down to you. They worship you. What else? A disadvantage still or an advantage? Pardon? A, a disadvantage or an advantage? No, I, I ask you for both. So you, you are the one who will tell me the one that you are addressing. Um, and a disadvantage is like has already been said is that um, you you become proud and you you, you don't look to God. So there's a separation from God, which in turn makes you poor, not- It's not, a, it's not automatic. So while, I, while I'm agreeing with you, it's not automatic, but it, if you're not careful, it has a tendency to push you in that direction. Okay. Because you feel that money can answer whatever the situation is. Solomon says it answers all things, but it's not the answer. But money answers, even though it doesn't provide the answer. Uh, but what are the advantages? Are there advantages to being wealthy? Can you think of the advantages of being wealthy? 
So in, this, you... in this dispensation. You, you can get the things you want almost immediately. That's material things. Is that an advantage? No. Is it, an, is it an advantage for you to be able to get the things you want almost immediately or to be able to get the things you want when you want them? No, I, I don't think there's really so much of an advantage to. But you are the one that is categorizing it now as an advantage. So what are the advantages of being wealthy? Surely there are some advantages, but you can't think of any. I'm not sure if the, the wealth in the context we're speaking about has any advantage. OK, all right. Thank you. Uh, Doctor, is there any advantage to wealth? I think the 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 advantages. Okay, I can I can only think of one or two. There's there's a place where he uh, was saying that we can use uh, money to buy friends. You know, you use it to buy friends. You know, when in terms of uh, when it, when things are not going on well, they will stand for you. That's one part. Then the other, the second part I can say is you can also use it to bless the poor because if we look at the one of the reason why God enrich people. You say what? Money is not a blessing. I, no, I'm saying that if Don't we, if we look at the money way God blesses Money is not a blessing. Money is not a blessing. Yeah, I know. I know. I know it's not a blessing, but yeah, I don't, I'm just trying to can use money bring to out uh, Okay. No, okay. okay maybe as you as you as you rephrase it. Okay. Let me let me rephrase it. We we uh, we can actually use it uh, just to feed the 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 people that are hungry, you know, to feed them. Or because I remember when uh, Abraham, uh, when God blesses Abraham, in the blessing that God blesses Abraham, God used Abraham to also feed a lot of people around. A lot of people that are hungry. God, God used use because of the wealth. It was, it was it was God that made him to be to be wealthy, and he was wealthy because of people that are around. You know, so I don't know that be... scripture, but anyway, I think you are making up the scriptures. <laughs> okay, that's what came, come to mind for now, sir. There is nothing in the scripture that said Abraham was giving money to people around. Yes, Benedict. <laughs> That is one of the problems that, that money always costs. You you believe that when you have the money, you can you can do God work. And that is there's no deceit that is that is more than that. People believe once you they have cash, that is when the God work can be done. That's when you'll be able to feed people, that's when you'll be able to touch people, that's when you'll be able to, to reach out to people in the hospital. I mean, whereby what God uses is his word and his. You want to do in your own corner side, pay for people and people will get saved. But you can also use money to feed people. Yes. You know, I cannot, you, know, you know, I cannot use money to feed people, but not in a language that men are using it. We, I think we, we exhort money so much because we believe that money is the answer to so many things, which is that is what makes God, uh, I think he, he anchors God. But by that, giving God glory, we think that money can do everything. From there, we do not shift away from God's side to any side of money. Let's continue this discussion next week. Uh, Benedict, pray for us. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord God, our Father, we bless you. We bless you for this knowledge. We bless you for understanding. We also ask, oh, Lord God, our Father, as we're living this, Father Lord, we ask that, that which you've taught us tonight, Lord, Father Lord, make it flesh in us in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us not to depart from it, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be blessed of your word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Say to the righteous, you are the apple of God's eye. In Jesus' name. You are the apple of God's eye. In Jesus' name. You are the apple of God's eye.
God bless everyone.